for me because you haven't been tested what I have been tested with. And the Prophet وسلم, later on it was told to her that that was the messenger of Allah you were talking to. And she went back and she apologized. And the Prophet وسلم, said to her, Inna sabr inda sadmat al That patience is exerted at the onset of the calamity, when it first happens. And the scholars, they categorize sabr, patience, into three categories. A sabr an ma'asiyatillah, a sabr ala aqdarillah, yani qadrillah, or a sabr, and I'm forgetting the third one. It's being patient with a sabr ala ta'atillah. Number one, being patient upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-sabr ala ta'atillah, being patient upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because being obedient to Allah is not just when it's convenient, it's just not on Jumu'ah, it's not on the day of the Eid, it's not on occasions during Ramadan. As some people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very diligently during Ramadan. And then after Ramadan is over with, then it's back to being who they were. But it's difficult. It's mashaqqa. There's some difficulty in being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, a sabra an ta'atillah, an ma'asiyatillah, is to be patient in staying away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being patient and staying away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, a sabra an aqdarillah, yani qadr Allah. To be patient with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees things upon us that can be difficult. And we have to be patient with those things. As Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Iman nisf sabr wa nisf shukr That Iman, true faith, is one half gratitude and the other half patience. Patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that indeed we have written in a book that which is going to befall you and that which is going to um, be a benefit to you. That so that you can not be arrogant because of the things that came to you, and this is shukr, and so that you do not fall into despair over the things that missed you. Sabr. Sabr wa shukr. That we combat the things that confront us in our lives with these two components. Patience and gratitude. Patience with the things that afflict us and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the things that he blesses us with. Because every blessing that we do not show Allah gratitude for, it becomes a curse. كُلُّ نِعْمَةً لَا تَشْكُرُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهَا فَهِيَ النِّقْمَةً that every blessing that you do not show Allah gratitude for, it becomes a curse. And showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ending, as Ibn Qayyim said, arkana shukr thalatha, that the pillars of gratitude are three. Number one, al-i'tiraf bi annaha min Allah jalla wa ala. Number one is to acknowledge that every blessing that you have is from Allah, not from you. Not because of your hard work, not because of your due diligence, not because of what you have exerted from yourself, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 50,000 years before he brought you into existence, he decreed that you were going to have the life that you have. Number one, to acknowledge that the blessing is from Allah. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنْ Allah. Allah says in the Quran that no blessing do you have except that it is from Allah. Number two, is, uh, is to use the, the ni'mah in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِسْتِعْمَالِ النِعْمَةِ فِيمَا يُرْضِ اللَّهِ to use it in a manner that is pleasing to Allah. Not to take something Allah blesses you with and use it to disobey Allah. But taking what Allah gave you to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, at tahadduth bi ni'matillah. It's to speak about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To talk about the blessings of Allah. Alhamdulillah, Allah loves to be praised for the blessings. And of course, this should be taken with a grain of salt especially in the time that we live in, because perhaps you might narrate your blessing to someone and he might become envious of you because of it. As, as Ya'qub, he said to Yusuf alayhi salam, لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيد لك كيدا Do not narrate your story, your, your dream to your brothers, because indeed they will plot against you. 
And he told his son, Yusuf, don't even tell your own brothers the dream that you saw that was a blessing because your brothers, your own brothers might plot against you. So sometimes even the blessing that Allah has given you, it may not be a good idea to narrate that to everyone else because perhaps the shaitan, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yajri Fibni Adam Majraddam, that shaitan flows through the blood of Adam like blood. So it may be, you know, to be cautious, to be on hadr, to be cautious about narrating your blessings to other people. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum.